Howdy everyone, I'm the Shadow of the Hawk, and welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, uh, feel free to hit that like button, hit the subscription button. Or if you hate me and you don't like this kind of video, uh, feel free to hit the dislike button, leave a hate comment, and make sure to hit that little bell so you can harass me on future videos. Because any interaction is good interaction with the algorithm. Today, as you, if you couldn't read the title, we are going to be discussing Xena versus Ahsoka. As in the, the shows. Uh, Xena, the Warrior Princess show, and Ahsoka show. And the characters within it. See, uh, I was behind the scenes talking about this, and uh, Tom the Rogue Attraction, link in the description, uh, brought up a point. And that point was, dude, shut up. Okay, he didn't say it like that. He was very, very nice. Uh, but the general point was that Ahsoka was acting like Xena the Warrior Princess. And Xena the Warrior Princess is a good character. I didn't know who that was. I was scolded for not knowing who that was. Um, and I proceeded to Google her, find a uh, Corsair Bay that possesses her uh, show, and I'm been watching it and i've been enjoying it and immediately i saw the comparisons of uh, xena like ahsoka is a uh woman on the latter end of her life or closer to the latter end of her life than the former end of her life uh who has seen some shit and done some shit and that has left a mark on her she's a very stoic and reserved person most of the time only really opening up to people who matter to her or when the situation is just absolute bad shit insanity and it's just the case. Or when she encounters uh, sweets that she likes. There's actually a uh, side tangent. The, the most, I, I think it's episode 12. I don't know. It's the one I just finished. Um, she basically like, uh, she she's undercover as like a princess. And uh, she develops like a liking of these like little donut hole looking things. And uh, the, uh, the episode ends with her sidekick, Gabrielle, being like, oh, so you couldn't get used to this life as a rich person? And she's like, no, I couldn't. Picks up a tray of these like donut holes. And it's like, they could have grown on me. And I just, like, little scenes like that make the character a lot of fun, which Ahsoka lacks, but I'll get into that later. Um, some more similarities are, th technically, these char they sh these shows are both spinoffs. Um, I will not, however, be treating them really like spinoffs, at least for the majority of this description, or this comparison, as I don't know enough about Young Hercules to really make a fair comparison between the two. What are the major differences? Well, for one, the first couple of minutes of Xena are used to establish who she is. You don't need to watch Young Hercules to know who this character is. She was a uh, reaving warrior queen who butchered and slaughtered and killed a bunch of innocent people. How do I know that? Because her first human interaction in the show was talking to an orphan who says, yeah, no, uh, the Xena the Warrior Princess killed my family. And that's why I'm starving. In this ruined village. Yeah. Uh, feel guilty. Um, and... She ends up deciding, hey, I need to stop being a warrior. And she tries to get rid of her, her armor, showing that, hey, this is weighed on her. However, she's driven into combat again, and she kicks ass, realizing I can never give this up, so I might as well do some good. And she picks up her sidekick, Gabrielle, and travels around what is basically just Greece, um, fighting monsters and bad people and doing the best she can to right some wrongs in the world and be a better person at the end of the day. Ahsoka opens up with um, her finding a thing. She, she's looking for a thing, and she gets the thing. And then she goes to a place, and she encounters a character that acts like a child, but is also a veteran of the Long War. And they do they talk a lot. And it doesn't really give you any information about their characters. Rather, it adds more questions. Who is Ezra? Who is Thrawn? Who, what is the Empire? What is the New Republic? What is Phoenix Squadron? Why is Gamora? Um, and yeah, you can go, well, Shadow, clearly you, you've you never seen Rebels. <laughs> you gotta go watch this other show in order to understand this show. <laughs> okay, so let me go watch Rebels. Who's Rex? Who's Honda Wanaka? Who's Ahsoka? Well, you gotta go watch Clone Wars. You, you're starting to see the problem. With Xena, it is a very... You don't need to understand this wider world of Hercules, the, this Hercules verse, this Greeks. You don't really need to understand it because everything is a very simple conflict. King, insert name here, needs Xena to do a thing or wants to kill Xena or wants to kill someone and Xena gets in the way. And the plot ensues. Ahsoka is so focused on the plot and the centralized story interacting with the universe that you need to understand the universe. And when you do understand the universe, it makes no fucking sense. Um, but going back into the stuff that's separate from each other, you get context for why Xena is a stoic, uh, aloof bitch. You don't get that for Ahsoka. You don't get any context for Ahsoka that actually matters. People will say things, 
but that's it's typically just exposition, not Xena. I was at the Battle of Corinth where you killed my brother, and I'm gonna kill you back. That establishes character motivation. I fought Thrawn in the war. I know what it's like. That doesn't give you any sort of character motivation. That's just exposition and still ask the question, who the fuck is Thrawn? Uh, next big issue that I have is, well, not issue, but comparison, is the apprentices. Gabrielle and Zabine, Zabine, Sabine are both apprentice-type characters for their masters. However, the difference is Sabine is established both in this show and in previous shows to be a com competent individual. Her niche in Rebels is that she does everything. She's an engineer. She's a combatant. She's a pilot. She's a daredevil. She's an artist. She's a um, maintenance specialist. She's everything. In Soka, she's none of those things. She is girl that needs to be trained by Ahsoka to be a Jedi, except when she's able to be Mandalorian bad bitch, at which point she's Mandalorian bad bitch. But even though she's 30, yes, she's 30, she's 30, um, even though she's 30, she still acts like a 14-year-old. But she doesn't act like Sabine as a 14-year-old, because 14-year-old Sabine spray-painted walls and left explosives everywhere. This Sabine just jams out to loud music and drives away on a speeder and nearly breaks government property. Gabriella, on the other hand, is absolutely a naive young girl. Yes, she has an ability with locations and she understands stories and myths, but she is not a combatant. She doesn't really understand the world in a practical sense until she travels with Xena. And you see her, uh, you see Xena's experiences rub off on Gabrielle. And you actually see the character grow over a couple of episodes from this girl who, I mean, yeah, she was able to out-talk a Cyclops. She was shitting bricks the entire time. Whereas Gabrielle at this point, would be able to out-talk the Cyclops and not be shitting bricks. Or would be able to encounter a group of armed men and convince them that, hey, I'm not the droid you're looking for. Episode 1, uh, Gabrielle couldn't do that. Episode Gabri 1, Gabrielle was also a lot more naive about the world. Current Gabrielle is a lot more uh, chill. Not chill, but she has a better understanding of the world. And while she's not exactly as hardened as Xena, she still is a very more pragmatic individual and understands that the world is not just one big story. Well, it is a big story. It's just not a fairy tale. Probably a better way to phrase that. Um, and then I touched on this a little bit earlier, but the soft core world building and the hardcore world building and the episodic and serialized nature actively makes um, uh, Xena better and Ahsoka worse. Why? Well, because um, Xena is locked in a soft core episodic, she can basically just do whatever she wants in an episode. They can make a character exist in the world to fill a role and have that character never exist again because the greater world isn't as established. It's just generic, loosely inspired antiquity with some other things thrown in, like uh, Persians in the middle of Greece, for instance, or uh, random Turkic tribes being the inspiration for some armor and weaponry. Whereas with Ahsoka, it is a set in Star Wars, which has a deeply established lore and world building, and these characters also have deep established lore and world building. This isn't like what happened with Din, where they've changed up some existing details about the universe that existed in books to make a more compelling story. This is Ahsoka and Sabine and Thrawn and Ezra have existed in Star Wars. They have context. You understand this stuff. The New Republic the Rebel Alliance, this has existed, and there's context, and they're butchering it to suit the needs of the Ahsoka show, rather than suiting Ahsoka show to the needs of Star Wars. Xena isn't locked into that level of um, that level of constrictiveness because they don't need to rely on an existing universe in order to tell their story. Whereas Ahsoka's draw is it's a Star Wars show about these characters from this show that you liked, and yet they're not sticking to that canon that they established. They're basically using the name and then not using the tools that come with the name. They're actually making new tools in order to tell a story they want to tell, but it ultimately ends up just sucking, at least to me. Um, that's basically the, this kind of little rambly talk done. Uh, if you'd like me to go into more detail about some things or you'd like me to springboard this topic off into something else, feel free to let me know down in the comments below if you hated this. Feel free to say hateful things in the comments down below and leave a dislike and uh, hit that notification bell because, uh, you know, if you hate me, if you hate me, hate all my videos. Give me all that interaction. It'll be fucking amazing. Uh, if you got past that little show and you're still here, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for engaging with my content. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're ready to join the conversation. Have a good one. See you next time.